Okay, here's uh, one more quick kind of a back to basics video that was requested by a few of my YouTube viewers as well as uh, one or two of my friends from my ham radio club. And it really is kind of a back to basics thing of it. Say, I've got an analog oscilloscope. How do I make a basic frequency measurement? So we're going to cover that here real quick. Okay, so what do we mean by making by frequency? So if we're looking at a signal, that signal might be a sine wave like that. It could be a triangle wave. It could be a complex thing like, you know, a video waveform, which can have some really weird looking shapes like this. Okay, but in all cases, we're talking about waveforms that repeat themselves. Okay, so the frequency is how often does that waveform repeat itself? How, many, how often do we kind of repeat the cycles? So, uh, so there are two ways to measure this, right? We can measure the period, which is, you know, the time it takes to go from one repetition of the cycle to the next and to the next, okay? Um, and then once we know that time period, we can just do the inverse of that to give me the frequency, okay? So we call this time period, okay, the actual the period of the waveform. So whether we're measuring, and the only important thing is to kind of, your reference is to you know, look at identical locations of subsequent, uh, you know, cycles. So I could make a measurement from here to here. That's one cycle. That's that, that would be the same identical measurement from here to here as long as we're looking at identical locations of subsequent waveforms. So on a triangle wave, we might measure it at the peaks. We might draw a line in the middle and measure at the crossing, you know, the crossing, say, from here to here. Now, it wouldn't be measured from here to here. That's not the period because this location here in time is not the identical spot of this. This is a rising edge, that's a falling edge. Here's the next rising edge, so that's the identical spot between here and here. That would be the period of the waveform. Same thing on the sine wave here. Okay. On a more complicated waveform like a video waveform, we might make it the, the beginning of like the sync pulse and make that, that measurement for frequency. But the idea is we're just measuring time, and we're going to call that uh, T okay, for the period. T standing for time. So the scope is really good at measuring T. So let's go set up a scope to look at that. So I've got a waveform coming from my signal generator up here uh, into the scope, into channel one. And I can see it on the screen. So a couple things I like to do is, first thing I want to do is center that waveform down in the middle of the scope screen. And the reason for that is that center gradical, you can see, has got a little bit larger uh, divisions on, you know, that horizontally there. It make, will make it easier for us to determine, you know, what fraction of a division <laughs> You know we're we're making a measurement on so so we go to the vertical position control here and adjust it and I'll adjust that waveform so it's basically about centered so there we're good now we need to kind of adjust our horizontal time base the horizontal time base on the scope is basically controls how quickly we're moving the beam across the screen okay uh, and uh, the faster we move it okay the more we'll stretch out the waveform so you'll notice I'm turning this up faster and faster I'm stretching that waveform out further 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 okay so how fast do we want to go well we want to see you know be able to clearly see cycles okay so you might say well that works or that works or that works but the other thing we want to do is is recognize the fact that we're going to be measuring time by counting divisions so if I had you know, a time base set here okay and I'm counting divisions and, and you'll notice I'm, I'm only you know, how closely can I determine okay I'm at you know 3.2 divisions or 3.3 divisions you know the error can kind of start adding up there and if so you, at best you might be able to estimate to you know a tenth of a division maybe you know in terms of accuracy okay but a tenth of a division if, if one cycle is a division it can be off by 10 percent so if I stretch it out more or more now that same tenth of a division is a much smaller proportion to the period so you really want to stretch it out such that you know, as much as you can so how much is too much well, if I went here, that's too much. And the reason for that is I don't have one complete cycle on the waveform here. So I need to back off until I have at least one complete cycle of the waveform to make a measurement on. That's the best setting to use. Okay. Now, what setting is that? So we can take a look at the time-based scale setting. I'm at one microseconds, and that says two. So I'm at two microseconds to a, a division. So this is time per division. So that tells me it takes two microseconds to go each division across the screen. Okay, so I've got 10 divisions, so it actually takes 20 microseconds to go the, the full screen, 2 microseconds per division. Okay? Uh, but also you want to make sure that, like some of these scopes have a magnifier. Down here there's a little time, a times 10 mag. And, that would, that, and when I do that on this scope, it lights up this light right here that says times 10 mag. And that's your indication that you would have to multiply this number by 10. Okay? But in this case we don't need to use that. 
I just point that out because you might have that turned on you know inadvertently on your scope so you want to make sure that you don't have any magnification turned on all right so the other thing to be sure that you were in a calibrated horizontal scale okay and how do we know that on this scope here and on a lot of them there's a variable control okay and you'll notice if I turn that variable control I can change and you know how much I'm stretching that waveform out but what it's also doing is it's taking me away from that two microseconds of division and I can tell it on this scope because it says on Cal not all of them do that so you want to be sure that your variable control is turned to its calibrated or locked position in this case it's turning this all the way until it clicks and you'll hear it it clicked okay so now I know I'm in the calibrated two microseconds per division but of course this is making the assumption that your scope is in calibration as well can't help you much with that okay so now I know I'm looking at two microseconds of division I've got the right number of cycles, in this case about a cycle and a half on the screen. The other thing I like to do is, you know, we want to make a measurement from a, one identical spot of the waveform to the next. And you want to pick something that's easy to measure precisely. So you wouldn't want to pick, say, the peaks of, you know, the sine wave because that's kind of a fuzzy area. Where is the exact peak? It's a lot easier to see where the line is crossing, say, that center line. So we're going to use those crossings as our reference. Now to make it even easier, what we can do is make those crossings steeper, right? The steeper they are in terms of crossing, and more precisely I can see where it's crossing. So I can make that steeper by growing the waveform vertically, and I can do that by changing my uh, sensitivity in the scope. So in this case, it's about 5 volts of division. If I drop down to 2 volts of division, okay, see the waveform grows, those edges got steeper, it makes it easier to make that measurement. So now I'm all set up ready to make the timing measurement for the period, all right? So what we can do is use the horizontal position control here to position the waveform back and forth. And what I'd like to do is let's pick my reference point. Let's say I want to pick where the where the the rising edge of the signal crosses that center line. Okay. And if I position that, say at one of these graticals right here, okay. So if I position it at that gradical there, now I can just count the number of divisions until it happens again. Okay. So in this case it's one, two, three, four, five, six. Oh, six and a quarter divisions, we'll call that. Okay. So it's six and a quarter divisions. Okay. So I've got 6.25 divisions. Okay. And I'm going to, how much time is that? Well, I know that I'm running at two microseconds of division, so I can multiply that by two microseconds per division. Okay. The divisions then cancel out. All right. And now I'm left with a 12.5 microseconds. So I know my period is 12.5 microseconds. So now the formula for frequency is really simple. Frequency is equal to 1 over the period. Okay, so 1 over 12.5 microseconds is equal to 80 kilohertz. Okay, so that tells me that this frequency of this signal is 80 kilohertz. Now let's see how accurate that was or how close that was. I'm going to take the signal out of here and let's bring it up into my little Frequency counter with I love these Nixie tube dis, you know, displays here. Well, 78 point or 79.85 uh, kilohertz. So that's pretty close. So if we're only off by 150 uh, 150 hertz out of 80 kilohertz, that's only a, well, you know, it's you know less than it's a few tenths of a percent of error. That's actually pretty good. Okay, especially considering that you know how much of an error could you have. In, term, in determining a fraction of a degree, or excuse me, a fraction of a division, and what's the actual horizontal time base accuracy? A lot of these analog scopes don't have a horizontal time base accuracy better than a percent or two. So uh, the fact that we made this measurement here to within a few tenths of a percent is actually pretty good. So that's how you make a basic uh, frequency measurement on an analog oscilloscope. You know, a lot of the newer digital scopes have got you know, uh, frequency measurements built in and things like that. But if you've got an analog scope that has a calibrated time per division, a horizontal time base, you can easily make a frequency measurement um, by following these, these simple steps. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed this Back to Basics video. Any further questions or any other videos that you'd like to see in the future, be sure to let me know, and comments are always welcome. Thank you.